Throughout the long history of the online Bionicle community, there have been several controversial figures. LJ, Kalen Eloeth, Edict Tarts, and many more have all had their fair share of altercations. However, many would agree with me in saying that none of them have been quite as controversial as Lime Libertarian 24. If you aren't aware of who Lime is, in which case I applaud you for making it this far, keep it up, I'll give a brief summary. For lack of a better comparison, Lime is kind of like that crazy uncle at your Thanksgiving dinner that believes that black people should be deported to Africa and that the Illuminati is manipulating the government and that Donald Trump will come to your local fire station to make sure they're firefighting properly. And by, uh, and by kind of like, I mean, he, he, he is, he, he is pretty much <laughs> that, that uncle. Lime has said a number of controversial statements in the course of his online career, but you can see those for yourself on his Tumblr blog. Lime flavored libertarian 24. No, the question I wish to ask today has haunted my mind since 2014 when I first encountered the man. Is he for real or is he a troll? Arguments have been made extensively for both sides. Some say his outlandish claims paint him as a fraud. Others say that his behavior has been too consistent and too constant for a troll. I myself did not know what to believe. As such, I decided that it was best to go to the source. To answer this question, I decided to interview Lime myself. Now the goal with this interview was twofold. First, I wished to learn more about Lime's background with the hope that it might give context to his behavior. Secondly, I wanted to analyze his responses to outlandish claims to see how he reacted. I believe that I succeeded and that I have reached a conclusive answer to the question of Lime Libertarian 24. So, without further ado, I present to you my interview of Lime. Bear in mind that I originally planned on interviewing him through voice call, but due to circumstances, we end up interviewing via email, so I provided an unclear response to it. Okay, enjoy. Okay, bye -bye. If you want to start the interview now, then go ahead. What's the first question? What's the story behind your username? Libertarian is fairly easy to see, at least anyone familiar with your work, but why Lime and 24? My name is Lime Flavored Libertarian 24 because before I started my TUMBLR, I made a lot of political blogs and I also chose to have that as my TUMBLR blog's name because it helps it stand out from other Bionicle blogs. I chose Lime because it's my favorite color and 24 to show it's almost like a news channel where it's always watching and always searching and watching for news and content. I'd say I'm more conservative than Libertarian. But I made that name for my blog a very long time ago so things have changed since then. So what's the next question? Interesting. I see that within the four of your avatar there seems to be some sort of spiraling symbol. Is there a story behind that? In the middle of 2016 I decided to change my blog's logo because the one I was using before was some images I photoshopped so I created a logo that was more original and I took inspiration for the spiral pattern in the four of the logo from my art blog Lime's Art and as you can see it has a lot of similarities to my art style. I'm ready for the next question. Ah, I see. I can definitely see the influence from your art there. When did you get your first Bionicle set? I got my first Bionicle set in 2001. It was Toa Luamata and I bought him at a local pharmacy. I noticed Bionicle right away the moment I saw those canisters and their unusual look. My second Bionicle set is Lebuk. Intriguing. As many members of the community know, you have a fascination with canisters. Do you have a favorite canister? E.g. 2001, 2006, etc. I'd have my favorites are the ones from 2001 to 2002 because you can attach pieces to them, but the ones they used for the crotted blind bags, actually canisters, because it had a pinhole which makes it useful for mocks, like I did for my flying robot manatee mock and myself mock. interesting use of that piece. How long have you been involved with the online Bionicle community? I've been a Bionicle fan ever since 2001, but I've been on TUMBLR since February 10th, 2014. When did you first hear about TTV and what led you to join the TTV message boards? 
I first heard about TTV back in late 2013 when I was looking for news about the 2014 Hero Factory sets and I saw a video by them and I have been a fan ever since. I see. Were you excited when you learned that Bionicle was coming back? I was so excited, but skippable for the months of July and August of 2014 all I could think about was Bionicle coming back and I couldn't wait for leaks, so I was excited. But I believe it until the leaked images in September came out I wasn't completely certain it was coming after that. Were you excited or disappointed to learn that G2 would be using CCBS? I didn't know for sure if it was coming back until I saw the leaked images in September that had the confidential watermarks on it. Because when they watermarks that say confidential you know it's probably real. I was fine with them using CCBS mostly because I wanted to see what they do with it. CCBS is a good system, but they need to make more sets like General Grievous with rather than just using bone pieces for knees and elbows. Overall, what was your opinion on G2? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it just disappointing? I think G2 was good, it wasn't perfect, but it was better than Hero Factory. G2's problem is that it had a better price per piece ratio for small and medium sized sets, but not as good of a price per piece ratio for the big sized sets. In G1 it was the other way around. G2 had a lot of potential, but the storyline very often was paced too quickly and they didn't show people the great uses for CCBS, but I'm glad they had tons of transparent pieces. I'm ready for the next question. done anything differently with G2 sets or story-wise? I would have packed them in canisters, I would have had color schemes that didn't have tons of neutral colors, that broke up the color schemes most of the times, sets like Holly Mari, Galu, Lua Fontoka are examples of consistent color schemes, I would have made more pieces that are similar to the axle gear piece from the creatures. I also would have had custom torsos like General Grievous has where it's made of CCBS bones to show the cool ways to use it, and I would have made some sets that are 500 to 800 pieces that use lots of CCBS pieces. As for the story, I'd just pace things out more slowly because the storyline was too quick and had very little details. I see. Many people are aware of, if only by name, your fanfiction flying robot manatee. Could you give a brief summary as to what it is and how it connects to Bionicle? It depends on what version of the story you read, but it's about a team of Toa who waken from cocoons and have to go underground an island called Manateeland to find flying robot Manatee's unconscious body and they have to find a mask to revive him. But the rebooted storyline is about an island populated by flying robot Manatee's that has buckets of chicken growing out of the ground, and when the buckets of chicken stop growing, Many of the manatees die, so as a safeguard each part of the island has a chicken leg that grows out of the ground with a toa inside that would awaken if buckets of chicken stop growing. Its connection to Bionicle is the main characters being a tram of toa and them being on island with different regions that each have a different element. I am ready for the next question. Can I ask, why manatees and buckets of chicken? What inspired you to create FRM? What inspired me to make a Bionicle fanfiction was being on the Tenkai Knights wiki and in the Tenkai Knights fandom they tend to write a lot of fanfiction, so I made my own and decided to make it about Bionicle with some really weird and humorous things added like buckets of chicken being a crucial part of the character's life. I am ready for your next question. Recently you've made headlines with your claim that Disney has bought Bionicle. Could you give your reasoning as to why you believe this? I recently saw a topic on the TTV message boards that had screenshots to a discussion from the LEGO message boards and a video and I decided to spread it around, to start a discussion about if Disney should buy Bionicle from and and what Bionicle would be like if Disney was the one who was making the sets and storyline. I don't believe Disney was going to bring back Bionicle, but I think an interesting idea and discussion. Ah, uh, I see. Thank you for clarifying. As a hypothetical question then. If LEGO were to use canisters in Disney's version of Bionicle, do you think said canisters would include a cup holder for refreshments? I doubt that, 
but I think the idea of another company making Bionicle sets is an interesting one to have because it seems like in recent years construction hasn't been doing well, so maybe Disney would somehow make Bionicle a mainstream again since LEGO seems to be coming known only for system themes. On a similar note to the Disney slash LEGO topic, could you elaborate on your claim that LEGO has been possessed by demons? What I mean by that is that LEGO has forgotten what brought them out of bankruptcy and that was construction, original themes and Bionicle. In my opinion LEGO's heart and soul is construction Bionicle and it's just sad to see construction in declining in popularity so much because how much it's done to help LEGO. Political slime are you still here? What's your next question? Recently, you mentioned in a video that you believe that the K2SO figure was too black. Could you perhaps summarize your reasons for that? I say that K2SO is too black because, you can barely see any of the details of the set. You rarely see LEGO sets that have as much red, transparent colors, yellow, lime, blue, orange, purple, etc. as K2SO does with black and it doesn't have as much value as a G2 Bionicle said because instead of an original theme with cool transparent color, it's a licensed theme with tons of black and boring neutral colors. Do you believe, as I do, that the Illuminati may be involved in the actions of LEGO? Perhaps, but I think in recent years, LEGO has started to care more about what environmentalists want in sets instead of fans who actually buy the sets. And I say this because the overwhelming majority of Bionicle fans want canisters, but LEGO appears to not want to use canisters, that shows a clear difference in what LEGO does and what fans want this might be either due to costs, and also environmentalists hijacking LEGO to act certain extent. I see. Interesting. On the topic of foreign entities involving themselves in the affairs of LEGO, do you believe that Donald Trump will bring back Bionicle? I hope Trump brings back Bionicle, but I understand he's got important things to do like save America's economy, build the wall, hopefully with Lego pieces or CCBS bones, and get jobs back. I doubt he'll bring it back, but it's important to bring that up as a way to save construction and bring back Bionicle. There have been rumors that you are actually Canadian, given that you were sighted at BrickFet in Toronto by our own moderator LegoMaster1378. If this is the case, can I ask why you care so much about American politics? Yes, I'm Canadian and I did meet Liga Master 1378 at Brick Fate in Toronto he's a cool guy. I talk a lot about American politics because it has a huge impact on the rest of the world. Very interesting. This has been a fun interview but I have one question left for you. Currently on the TTV message boards you are suspended until May 24th, 2289 at 1.39 p.m., more than 250 years in the future. Do you plan on returning at that point? Maybe, but if I was able to not be suspended I'd be very happy and I'd be more careful about what I do or say on there. But right now I'm posting most of my content on TUMBLR and YouTube, so I have a platform currently to post things, but I would want to be back on the TTV message boards. Alrighty then, thank you for your time Lime, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for interviewing me, it was fun and if you want to find out more about me and my content then check out my TUMBLR blog http colon slash slash lime f lover red libertarian t4.tumblr.com slash. It's been fun too. Keep up the great work. And thus ended my conversation with Lime. So what does this mean for our question? Lime's answers to my questions, while easily argued against, are not outlandishly crazy. He didn't claim that I was pure evil. He didn't say that Bionicle was sent by Jesus. He gave fairly normal responses to my questions, which is not something I would expect from someone craving attention. He does seem to backtrack on a few of his claims, such as the demon's question, but I attribute that to him exaggerating on his blog. As such, I believe that this interview proves that Lime is not a troll, and that he is sincere in what he says and does. Lime is simply a man, and slash or child, or a man-child, or a child-man, do those exist? Anyway, bye. 
Hashtag Game Theory's political sign actually is up a line limit with 24. Find out next week! This is the outro song. It goes at the end of the video because it's fine. That's where it goes because it's an outro and click the buttons, please. Subscribe? No, the question I was. No, the question. No, the question I was. No, the question I wish to ask today. No, the question I was. <laughs> with. Why do I want to say with? No, the question I wish to ask. No, the question I was. No, the question. <laughs> say the stupid line. No, the question I wish. No, the question I wish to ask. Wish to ask. No, the question. No, the question I wish to ask today has haunted my mind since 2014 when I first encountered the man.